Welcome back, viewers. Our goal is to keep bringing you authentic travel series that capture the true essence of each country we visit. But to do that, we need to travel internationally for six months of the year, which gets really expensive. Especially if we're paying rent or mortgage back home when we're not even there. So we've bought a van and we'll convert it into a mobile home. This way, we never have to waste any money on rent and can afford to bring you these series indefinitely, hopefully. <laughs> So this mini-series will be a bit different from our usual content, as we'll take you through the van build process before jumping back into the country explorations that we normally do. Stick around. So we scoured the internet for the biggest vans we could find. The one that was the best price was in Melbourne, so we flew down to pick it up and then drove it 18 hours straight back up to Brisbane. So here it is, during the day. 220 kilometers, 2016 Volkswagen Crafter. Bit of paint here, bit of paint there, someone's put on it by accident. A couple of spots of rust on it here and there. But they're very superficial. Um, I don't think it's too important, so we're gonna get all that off. We're gonna put a door in here. So the idea being that like, we can go into the back when we park somewhere without having to get out of the vehicle. So it's just a lot less sus. Um, and I noticed the hive is. Uh, that's because we want to make it like a worker van. <coughs> Excuse me. That's because we want to make it like a worker van. So you put the hive is in the front and already a couple of our friends are like, what's with the hive is? So people notice them. So yeah, that make it like a worker van. So it's less like someone's living in here. There's actually a ton of light in here, which is really not what we're expecting. Um, very cool. So yeah, I mean it's not perfect. It's got like little dings out of it, but you know it's a 2016 with 220 kilometers, so it's a really good nick, um, considering you know that it is nearly 10 years old. Um, if we'd bought it new, it would have cost us twice as much, so yeah, it's a long wheelbase as well. Um, and the crafters are a lot longer than the Renault Masters. I can stand in it, stand in it and I've still got loads of roof, loads of room rather, um, which means first job is to get all this panelling off. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do now, get the panelling off. Um, the awesome thing is that Amy's dad has lent us all the tools we need. If you're watching this, thanks Tony. It's quite a lot worse than I thought it was going to be, like the sides, because the roof wasn't exposed so I knew it was this kind of stuff. And the sides are the same, so I guess overall it's fine. Yeah, this stuff down here, I've got a screwdriver now. You can see it's just full of dirt and mud. Like, almost looks like gardening, compost type stuff. Pieces of, pieces of old wood that are just rotting in here. Um, that's really annoying because obviously that's gonna create a load of rust. It's just, a, just, just literally laziness. So he's boarded it up to sell it, so it looks brand new, but underneath, you know, there's loads of rust and stuff. I wasn't born yesterday, I, you know, I sort of expected that. I knew it was going to be a bit dodgy underneath, but I thought the engine was what was most important, I knew that was fine. It hasn't even taken the paint off. By some miracle, um, it's not even rusted and it hasn't even taken the paint. don't know if you can see that. The plan is to power wash it out and then just let it dry in the sun and the wind for a day before we start working on all this rust. And this stuff here is so surface level. I just scra I scraped some off. And you can see it's just uh, it's very, very surface level. Yeah, 
streets. No pictures, please. Cameras flashing. I'm VIP. I'm a big deal. My life a movie. I'm the one they wanna be still. And I'm a queen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I keep my circle tight. They let me in. Yeah, yeah. I look like a bad man. I'm on the one and only. Because what happens when the tool is too powerful for the girl She can barely hold on to it So Someone Scrape all the way along here So I'm having to come up here with the angle grinder To get all these little bits off I don't know if you can see that, but this is like really deep in there. So we are done now with the stripping of all the rust. You can see how much better it is. Night and day. The problem is I can't get the little tiny black spots out of it. The worst of which is down here. I just can't get it out, it's so deep. I think it's just stained in the metal, like these. I can't get that out. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a jet wash now, jet wash it all out, which isn't ideal. I don't wanna do that because, you know, I thought it might rust a bit again, but I can't get all this stuff out of the gaps all the um you know filings and that have been kicked up by the angle grinder a lot of them have been swept out now because i've been sweeping as i've been going along but also a lot of them have gone down into the side of the doors um i could try and hoover it out but i just think that ultimately just like really spraying it all out one more time will be best and then we're going to treat it with a rust treater and then we're going to prime it with a special rust primer and then we're going to paint it is it taking four days to get this far yeah, so four solid days of sanding. We fucked up. We fucked up big time. We washed it and now it's all gone rusty. <laughs> We're back where we started. Dry it and use the, the, the rust stuff. Yeah. Rust sand. stuff? Not sand. What do you mean? Yeah. We messed up. We messed up. Oh well. I am cleaning these off so that I can then spray them with the primer and also then paint them. That's the plan today. Prime it straight away so that it doesn't rust um, just sitting here. So now I'm just priming it with some etch primer. Bloody hell. Come on, man. Ah. Amy, can you pass me a sock? Oh, might have gone a bit heavy there. Oh no. <laughs> Nothing, it's going really well. Now, painting it. Well, good morning viewers, friends, family viewers. Here we are in our 1996 Corolla. Amy here is driving. It's, it's a bit dirty at the moment. It's full of bolts and disc, uh, angle grinder discs and packets of old crisps and crackers, whatever. So we're really living that builder lifestyle. Mike, our, sorry, fuck it. <laughs> our barbecue, stove. our camping stove is in the boot. And you'll notice here we've got our bacon, which is obviously kept at uh, temperature. room temperature, a, a safety hazard. <laughs> the, what happened was a Amy's dad, Tony, didn't really have somewhere we could stay, uh, long term at least, and neither did Amy's mum. But Amy's grandmother did have somewhere we could stay. She has a little spare room for her grandchildren <laughs> that's a bunk bed. We didn't have space to do the van build over at, the, at our grandmother's. Our grandmother's? Your grandmother's? So, um, 
So we managed to find somewhere to rent in this guy's little yard and uh, he's only charging us $60 a week. He uh, lets us use the electricity, he lets us use the water, um, all included, so it's a real deal. And it's uh, actually quite good because it keeps the mess away from Amy's grandmother's. Um, so here we are coming to Bunnings, which is the Australian version of B&Q. And this is basically our daily trip. We do this pretty much every single day. <laughs> oh, and now you will see an Australian institution which is sausage sizzle. I wonder I'll be a sausage sizzle. Yeah. Sausage sizzler. Sausage sizzler. <laughs> so yeah, they, they like volunteer and I think you buy the sausage sizzle for like $3.50, so like nothing. And then all the money goes to charity. So yes, we should go get sausage sizzle now. You want sausage sizzle? Yeah, we've uh. got to show the people, the viewers. The sausage sizzle from the sausage sizzle stand. But yeah, it's such an Australian thing, like everyone knows about it. And everyone, any, any Australian who eat meat abroad always bangs on about a sausage sizzle. I mean, it is basically just a sausage in a flat piece of white bread. But you have to go diagonal. Flat piece of white bread. So you join me again on the roof. <laughs> I seem to be like constantly on the roof when I'm doing these videos. So we're just like measuring out the section for the uh, roof rack. And underneath, underneath we've figured out where we want the screws. So now Amy measuring them out on top. So I know I need one. We need to figure out where they are underneath. Pull the little thing out. Oh, yeah, I was this way around, wasn't I? We did like this. We bent it round. Right. Oh. Oh. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four. And then because we're gonna have our own body weight here, basically putting an extra one here so that when we jump up on here and grab it, to like, to like pull ourselves up. We're not putting weight, we're not bending it. The weight will be distributed between these two bolts. This is a big moment because we're drilling holes in the roof of our van. <laughs> if we mess it up, we can fill it in. So we're just using a teeny tiny drill head for now. And then once I've got the holes in, if they're in the right place, comes the big boy. <laughs> oh God. Oh shit. Oh god. Maybe we should have started recording what you did of you. Ah. Ah. Oh fuck. I just hope the wire is not on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Maybe I should go down. There's, there's, a, there's a wire on the other side. <laughs> Is that our brake lights? Mm. Uh, all right, okay. Good effort, guys. The idea now is that the, the little hole will be a guide for the bigger one. Botch job! <laughs> the, the, people who watch this channel are going to start to realise that we don't know anything. No, we don't know anything. We just, we just do. We just do. <laughs> So to line up the holes, I have we tape some string here and we'll line all the way along there so that we put the holes in the same place on the width of the bracket or the width of the roof rack pole thing. Now, because it's a bot shop, I don't have this piece of string long enough. So I've tied pieces of string together. So if it's tight, we'll be on course. If it's wobbly, uh, I don't know if we can even post this. It's, we're doing such a bad job. Does that look like roughly right to you? I guess so. This is so inaccurate, I can't believe it. Oh god. And I'm drilling up with the little drill piece into the holes that we made, right here. And we're trying to line them up. So right now you can see, move it slightly. The other bar, see now it's closed. They're all lined up every time I put, every time I put a hole in. Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. <laughs> there you go, look at that. Now we're gonna put the thick one. I'm just gonna drill. All the way through. All the way through everything. And basically, and then bolt it. And then hope for the best. And hopefully by bolting it, that'll give me a bit more guidance for the rest over here. 
<laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> oh, our family are gonna watch this. I think we're such idiots. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who says that you need years of experience? Just get a drill and oh, go for it. My wrists. Well done. You held oh. it really tight. Was that hard? No, it was good. Cool. So now is the moment of truth. I can't actually get that in. No, you can. Okay, I'm gonna try. I have to turn this off. <laughs> we have a roof rack. Look at that. No need to see that. <laughs> yeah, look, perfect. And it's absolutely, it's rock solid. You're moving the whole In fact, when I shake it, it shakes the whole van. So these roof racks are now on. As you can see, I have put two bolts there to raise them up, a rubber washer, a spring washer to uh, stop vibration. Well, if it vibrates, it, the spring washer should stop the uh, uh, nut come loose, that's the idea. And obviously up here, there's gonna be quite a bit of vibration in theory. Um, it's a 10 mil one. Uh, so I've got two there, one there, and one down there. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna sickerflex, which is like the sealant. Um, I'm gonna sickerflex around the nut just to make sure that they're, you know, not gonna leak at all. And to get the panels on, I've bought these, uh, and I'm gonna put them essentially here, like that. Um, these are actually really quite heavy, uh, so we're making sure everything's bolted in. I looked it up, and the I think the tensile tensile strength of these is 3.5 tons or just under 3.3 tons per bolt. I think that means that it's like the weight after which the bolt would just like shear off. So these are really strong, these 10 mil, um, 10 millimeter bolts. So we've got them all on the roof and now we're just, we've measured them all out and it's perfect. Oh, it's... Okay, we need to take a bit more off the front. Because the problem is up there, there's very little guidance to know where the square is exactly, so it's much easier to just put it up here. It's going all over my face. These are not, these aren't safety glasses. <laughs> these couldn't find the safety glasses somewhere in Amy's glasses. <laughs> Some very accurate guide holes. And what I'll do is I'll draw a line from one to the other, on the other side. I'll line up the three dots on the other side with that to get the curve. Woo! So Amy's just finishing up some of the paint work. She's just uh, sanding it down, then she'll prime it, then she'll put some paint on it. This we picked up today. This is the five centimeter thick um, insulation, it's extruded polysinery or XPS. Uh, it's got one of the highest R values, which is the measurement of its ability to insulate. Um, so yeah, it's five centimeters thick. Um, and that's gonna go essentially to here. And the great thing is we're gonna do the insulation on the back wall here. We're gonna do both sides, roof and floor. So the idea is that uh, you know, we'll be in a cocoon of insulation. We co we, well, not cozy, it's actually the opposite. We're trying to stay cool, which is the, it's, it's the thing the insulation does. You'd think it'd just be heat, but it's, um, it's, it, it keeps you cool as well. So yeah, I've got the fan in here, and then I'm putting the other one in here, and then this is the skylight. Um, so I'm just cutting out now with the saw. I'm cutting out some wood, again, uh, which will act as a frame, just like this one around the outside. So the idea is like you put screws in through the top. I can show you here, look. So the idea is that you put screws through here and it goes through the, through the plastic housing. It'll go through the roof and then it'll go into the wood. And then what the idea is when we were sat in bed, we'll be able to see the stars through it. Or like now, a beautiful tree, a beautiful tree. <laughs> Seems like every time I make a video, it starts with me on the roof. So here, today, 
I've just sticker flexed around here again, the edges of this, and I've also sticker flexed each of the screws like that. Just so that like no water gets in. Passing things up and down is like the biggest daily ritual. And then we brace this with two pieces of wood because this bit had come away from the frame. We think someone had attached something to it and it just ripped, it essentially ripped these things off the back and bent this. Well, of course, we're gonna wood frame, wood panel over this. So it needs to be flat um, so that we can get, you know, a straight piece of wood across it. So we have braced it with two of these things. Um, you can actually see the, the wood bending there. So we braced it with these and that's uh, pushed the metal back in and now we've just like sicker flexed it so it'll keep it there. Yeah, so then we taped up the windows. We sanded all the doors. We sanded the doors so you'll notice that they're not shiny anymore. Oh, they, the, gloss, the gloss has come off and then we will prime them and coat them with paint. Um, and these bits will be showing um, in the van so we want to do a really good job of the paint work here. Um, and you may be wondering what this is. This is because the uh, clamp has a metal thing. I don't want to take our eyes out, so a little invention. I've literally just been using a ruler. A ruler? Yeah. Amy thinks it's funny the way I say ruler, because I'm English. How do you say it? Ruler. 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 we need to sound dead and so we have to stick the matte um, rubber pieces just like slap them on I don't know exactly how it works but I think it's got something to do with like vibration like it stops the vibration yeah that's it yeah yeah, yeah. Pretty good, eh? So we're just trying to get them as tight as possible. So we just sicker flexed all in here because as we were like messing around with the solar panels and bouncing around on the roof, it started to just like come away at some of the seams, the glue on the columns. So we've just re-glued it all. We put a load of bricks up there just to push the roof down onto the sicker flex seal. So Amy's been picking up loads of bricks and passing them up to me. But look what she found. You know you're in Australia, mate, when you see one of these bad boys. I had it in my hand. Look at that. Oh, it doesn't move. It's so cocky. You can poke him, he doesn't move. I don't want to be cruel, but he doesn't give a crap. It's just so Australian, isn't it? The spider's like, all right, mate, how do you feel about it? Oh, I suppose he's a straight in, he'd be like, come on, mate. You think you can take me? Come and get me, mate. I mean, I literally was poking him, but he didn't care. This is a tough spider. <laughs> so here we have the frames for our cupboards. They're gonna be hanging off these, like this, on gas hinges. They're gonna be attached on the wall here and on the ceiling there. We had a play with the foam just to see what it's like. Um, but you can actually like saw it off. Um, it becomes like rock hard. Um, so yeah, so we're going to foam in here. We need to finish up the insulation. Obviously there's bits where it's not finished yet. So we're just getting this backboard out. Or the cab wall divider. And we're taking this out so that we can clean just under here. Um, and then we're also going to cut the door into it. Uh, and we're going to put a massive um like drawer in like a i guess a, another cupboard sort of thing in here and it's gonna go that's gonna go through there and into here um because this is such a waste of space so the bed plan is we've got the bed panels here and this was just a little hack we didn't want to build all this so we just went and bought a bed um and these were basically whoop, I can do this one-handed. These will basically go across there like that. We need to cut them short a little bit. And then the slats will go on those. 
So we're just going to bolt those bits into the wall here. And then we can sleep in the van, which is great because I'm horrifically allergic to Amy's grandmother's cat. <laughs> <laughs> so I can barely breathe most days right now. If any of you have been following us for some time, you'll realize that actually sleeping in a van that's half, con half constructed is a luxury compared to some of this camping we've been doing this year. <laughs> so we'll be quite happy in here. So we got the bed for $30, which is about 17 pounds. And then we got this for $85. And it's gonna be the kitchen countertop. You can kind of see it there. Um, so again, like nothing, like 40 pounds. Is it coming off all the way? Oh, it's still attached in. Oh, is it? So we finally got this out and it had like, what, 50 screws? Mm -hmm. It's like 50 screws. You can see here like one, two, three, all the way around. And then of course, there were just two that didn't come out. This one and that one over there. So I had to get the angle grinder and then cut into there, which was really hard because I was on this side of the wall. So I had very little space. I had to like, cut a piece into the metal. I don't think I went through the floor though, incredibly. Whoa. Put it on that side of the yeah, so. Oh, weird. Yeah. It looks like a bigger space. Yeah, but it's just so vanny. <laughs> yeah, it feels like you're living in a van. I don't like it. I like having it closed off because you can feel like you're in a house. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Weird though. Look at all this extra space that we're losing. Yeah, I noticed that. Whoa. I didn't cut any wires. I think we just need to do this. Because we're not actually gaining that much space. Did we get that conversation between you and me on camera before? Nope. Big moment. Oh shit. Fucking hell. <laughs> that bit we want to keep nice. We want to keep it. Yeah. Impressed. And now I'm going to fix the bed frame to the wall the uh, strapping needed to hold the bed frame. Oh, no, but that'll work, won't it? Okay. Cool. So just deciding how high we want the mattress. So Amy's getting in a position that she may need to be in a bed for looking in the cupboards above her head, right? Mm. If you were looking in the cupboards, you might be on your knees. <laughs> Come on. It's here, minimum. 112 centimetres, 102 centimetres. Okay. So plus the mattress. Which is 18. Oh, that's quite low. Where does that end? So basically as low as possible, essentially. Okay, well, we'll drop it down low. Okay, all right, not a problem. Yeah. We'll have it here. We'll have it there. Yeah? Yeah. I am, I am making five by five centimetre blocks, and Amy is tetrising them into the hole.